We are back here this morning on the 38th day of hearing. And uh, shortly after the 16th of June, I can probably recall that almost 12 days that uh, we have not been here to continue with the hearing simply because of some of the issues that we need to get it cleared. And I'm glad that being here this morning gives the assurance that that has now been covered and that's the reason why we are here again this morning. <clears throat> And with a lot of happenings that is going on right now, because of the national general, national gen, general election issues, uh, we are aware of that, and that's the reason why sometimes it takes the attention away from that. Though having said that, we a normal focus, and we are here to deal with things that we need to go on with. I also like to make a short remark here that <clears throat> I thank the, the service provider, uh, Spider Tech, to be back with us this morning. Uh, recently, I have express our condolences to the owner of Spider Tech when he lost his life, something that we cannot control. But we have a very good team that they are on and they are here with us again this morning. So in expressing my gratitude towards that, I also welcome Spider Tech again to be with us to continue with this work of the inquiry. For this reason, we have two agenda items that we need to deal with. And they are important because it will highlight some of the things that over the past 10 days we have try to get ourselves back in order so that the work of the Commission of Inquiry must continue. As we have earlier stated, I will deal with the opening remarks and that will be presented here this morning. Uh, is the main point of our resumption for the COI. And in this uh, address, I'd like to highlight a few points that the public should be aware of. And not only that, but it is important because it allows time for people to look at it carefully and see the essence of why it is important that we are conducting this Commission of Inquiry. So ladies and gentlemen, a very good, good morning to you all. Firstly, I will highlight the extension of the inquiry and the uh, amended terms of reference. And for the benefit of those who are listening out there, or you are now connected to our Facebook page on this inquiry, I'd like you to take a close focus on what is to be read here this morning. You may recall from our previous hearings that 
the commission had confirmed that an extension was being sought from the prime minister as to the reporting deadline, given the unavoidable disruption to the hearings caused by inter alia the intervening national elections. I am indeed pleased to formally announce today and welcome the decision by the Prime Minister to extend this inquiry. I confirm on 7 June 2022, the Prime Minister extended the period of the Commission from 16 June 2022 to 16 December 2022. The Prime Minister has also amended the terms of reference for the Commission. The extension and amended terms of reference are available on the Commission's website, that is www.coymotocarewolf.com. I now turn to the relevant instruments contained in the National Gazette number G500 and G501 of 2022, published on Thursday, the 23rd of June, 2022, and I quote, extension of the Commission of Inquiry into the Sale and Purchase of Motor Care, WOF. I, James Marape, Prime Minister, by virtue of powers conferred by Section 2, 4, and 4A of the Commission of Inquiry Act, Chapter 31, and all other powers, me enabling hereby, number one, extend by six months, commencing on or about 16 June 2022, the term or period of the investigation by the Commission of Inquiry into the sale and purchase of the motor care wolf. And second, extend the amended terms of reference to be investigated during the period of extension with effect on and from the date of signing this instrument. Dated the seventh day of June, 2022. Honorable James Marape, Prime Minister. In addition to that, the Commission of Inquiry into the sale and purchase of the Motorcade Wharf to C.K. Julian Tolik, Commissioner and Chairman. Amended statement of case. A, the introduction. Number one, in 2020, the National Executive Council resolved to endorse the Prime Minister's intention to convene a commission of inquiry into the sale and purchase of the motor care wharf. The appointment of a commission of inquiry was deemed necessary by the Prime Minister to establish the facts surrounding the, uh, surrounding the agreements and related transactions valued in excess of one billion, underpinning the relocation exercise, including all persons and entities involved. Number two, the Prime Minister continues to maintain his view that the appointment of a Commission of Inquiry into the sale and purchase of the motor care wharf is for the public welfare. I move on to B, point B, which is the objective. Number one, the objective of the Commission of Inquiry is to inquire into the established, is to inquire into and establish the facts surrounding A, the decision as to the relocation of the Port Mosby Wharf, B, the decision as to the selection of Motokaya Wharf as the preferred relocation wharf site, C, 
the decision as to the acquisition of Motocare Wharf and related funding agreements valued in excess of one billion, and the individuals and entities who were instrumental in the negotiation, in this case, the middlemen who were involved for and on behalf of the state and its instrumentalities. How were they engaged and how much were paid as fees for the services as brokers and negotiators? E, whether breaches of mandatory constitutional requirements were occurred and whether there, were, there was negligence on the part of leaders and persons involved in the various agreements and related transactions underpinning the relocation exercise, including the negotiation, sale, purchase, construction, and development of the motor care wharf. The ultimate objective of the Commission of Inquiry is to establish whether there were breaches of PNG laws and constitutional requirements in the process of negotiation and approval in the relocation of the, of the Port Mosby wharf an accusation of the motor care wharf and its development, and also establish whether PNG as a country had suffered as a result of this deal, and whether the persons involved in the deal can be held accountable for the actions. I move on to the amended terms of reference. Follow me with this. Know you that I, Honorable James Marape, Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, reposing confidence in your integrity and ability to do so by virtue of the powers conferred by Section 2 of the Commission of Inquiry, Act Chapter 31, and all powers me enabling hereby direct the commissioner and commission to inquire into the following matters. Number one, the commission shall, so far as reasonably possible, inquire into the make findings and report on the following matters. A, when was the decision made to relocate the Port Mosby Wharf to Motor Care Wharf? Who made the decision to relocate the Port Mosby Wharf to Motor Care Wharf? C, what was the rationale for the relocation of the Port Mosby Wharf to Motor Care Wharf? D, what were the terms and conditions of the decision to relocate the Port Mosby Wharf to Motor Care Wharf. Diddy, how were the transactions and dealings as to the acquisition, sale, construction, and development of the Motor Care Wharf, including the underwater leases and causeways and allo and associated facilities negotiated, executed, structured, financed, and managed to the Motor Care Wharf project. What is the status of the transaction relating to the Motor Care Wharf project? What are the historical land dealings from the time of acquisition of the customary land up 
to the Motor Care Wharf project. Whether there was statutory compliance in the process, dealings and transaction relating to Motor Care Wharf project, whether there was whether there were any circumstances of conflict of interest in the Motor Care Wharf project. Point number E, whether due and proper legal and administrative processes were followed in the sale and purchase of the motor care wharf, including, but not limited to, number one, how was the process commenced? What process was utilized? Who was involved? How was the whole transaction structured or arranged? Who was the financier of the entire transaction? What were the terms and conditions of the entire transaction? What was the value of the whole transaction? Whether due and proper legal and administrative processes were followed in the procurement of services for the development and construction of the motor care wharf including but not limited to, number one, who was the contractor selected? How was the contractor selected? What criteria was utilized? What was the value of the contract? How was the whole transaction structured or arranged? Who was the financier of the entire transaction? What were the terms and conditions of the entire transaction? whether the whole transaction has been completed and settled. What processes have been utilized in the, part, in the past to establish finance to transactions similar in nature? And recommendations for the prosecution of any illegal activities, including but not limited to the recovery of monies lost through any illegal criminal or negligent conduct in the entire transaction. These terms of reference may be added to and amended from time to time. The commission shall use its best efforts to conclude the, its inquiry and shall make a full and faithful report on the recommendations concerning the aforesaid matters and transmit the same to the Prime Minister after concluding its inquiry. The provisions of the Commission of Inquiry Act, Chapter 31, shall be applicable for the purpose of this inquiry. The Commission may hold public and private hearings in such manner and in such locations as may be necessary and convenient. All organs of state, institutions, and stakeholders are required to cooperate fully with the Commission. And I further direct that the inquiry be held in the National Capital District or at such other places in Papua New Guinea or elsewhere as you may appear necessary and expedient. And I further direct that the inquiry shall be held in public, but I approve that you may permit to be given in private any evidence that in the course of your inquiry, you, in your absolute discretion, discretion, consider needs to be given in private in accordance with section 2, 5 of the Commission of Inquiry Act, chapter 31. And I further direct that you shall continue with the inquiry without delay and proceed therein with all dispatch and render to me your final report by 16 December 2022. Dated the seventh day of June 2022 and authorized by Honorable James Marape, Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea.
This is the statement of case and a new instrument that have now been signed by the Prime Minister. I now move on to the next agenda item on my diary this morning, daily diary this morning, and that is to do with the Commission of Inquiry Roadmap. As a result of the extension, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to also announce a revision to the Commission's roadmap. And let me really major on this, uh, given the five broad phases that have been re revised in the following terms. Number one, summons and the production phase. A is the issue of further summons to be completed by or before Friday, 15 July 2022. B, return of existing summons. That is on Tuesday, the 26th of July, 2022. And B, I should, should be C, return of a further summons dated Thursday, the 28th of July, 2022. In dealing with the investigation phase A, the month of July, August, and September, in light of our roadmap, has been targeted as the investigation phase for the month of July, August, and September 2022. Three, our public hearing phase is on July, August, September, and October 2022. Fourth is our reporting, report writing phase, which have been targeted to November and December 2022. And lastly is our report delivery phase, which has been dated on the 16th of December 2022. So these are, uh, this is the roadmap for the after the result of the extension, and it is necessary that the inquiry has to establish this roadmap to guide us through during the next six months. And therefore, in conclusion, uh, I also wish to publish the press statement number nine of 2022, which is in the following terms, and I quote, Further to the, the, the media release or, or the press statement number nine of 2022. Further to the public statement number eight of 2022 issued by the Commission of Inquiry as to the formal confirmation of an extension sought from the Prime Minister to its reporting deadline, given the unavoidable disruption to the hearing caused by inter earlier the intervening national general elections, the commission today announced as follows. Number one, on 7 June 2022, the prime minister extended the period of the commission from 16 June 2022 to 16 December 2022. Number two, the prime minister has also amended the terms of reference for the commission, and three, the roadmap has been revised as a result of these developments. The extension, amended terms of reference, and revised roadmap are available on the commission's website, and I appeal to all the public to get to the website and get this information if you want to know the details. We wish to remind the public and interested persons or parties to consult the Commission's website. Again, I repeat, www.coimotocarewolf.com. 
to keep yourself informed of the Commission's progress to date. And again, once again, dated this 20th day of June 2022 and authorized by the Commission. That is the media release and the press statement number nine of 2022. With that, I now invite Council Assisting, Giroro Gibson and Kipper Maleva to address the inquiry. Thank you, Councils. Good morning, Commissioner and the Commission. Commissioner, uh, as it pleases the Commission, Giroro Initial G for the, uh, as Council Assisting, I agree with my friend, Mr. Kipper. Commissioner, we appreciate the opening remarks that you have given to the Commission as to the extension of the terms of um, reference and also the amendment therein, insofar as the deadline for reporting has been extended. Now, Commissioner, uh, we note the, the roadmap that you have outlined in relation to the conduct of the inquiry, the dates that that the Commission has outlined, particularly in relation to the conduct of hearings commencing on the 26th of July, Commissioner. Uh, if I can just indicate, if I can just indicate tentatively to the public that we are uh, currently liaising with um, the management of APEC with a view to securing that venue um, for the conduct of further proceedings relating to the inquiry so we will keep the public informed in that regard. And also the persons who have current summonses that have been extended and also further summonses that are to be issued given the amendment to the current terms of reference. Now, Commissioner, if I can also just make, mention that just as a housekeeping matter, the inquiry was to commence this morning at 10 o'clock. Now, there was an, uh, an issue in relation to access to the, to the commission hearings. Um, we will be making an appropriate submission, Commissioner, that in, in, the, in the circumstance under which the premises were, were locked down, we will be recommending to the commission that the officer concerned be issued a warning, Commissioner to ensure that um, the proceedings of the Commission are not in any way affected. And as, as a result of that warning, we, we submit that a, a warning just be issued for, for, to the officer concerned, and that obviously if any further interruptions caused by not only that officer, but any other person involved with the Commission or any person who attends the hearings does not in any way affect the conduct of the proceedings and that failing which uh, appropriate steps be taken, inclu including contempt proceedings against those officers or individuals concerned. So I just merely put that on record. The proceedings were to commence at 10 o'clock this morning, but for that very reason, the commission proceedings was delayed by over an hour. And I simply wish to record that so the public is, is aware as to why there was a delay in the proceedings commencing uh, over an hour late this morning. So I simply wish to record that, Commissioner. Apart from that, Commissioner, we have no um, further matters. So if the Commission could be formally adjourned to Tuesday, the 26th of July, 2022, at 10 a.m., with the venue to be advised, and that is to be by way of um, pre a further press release, and or uh, notice in the, on the Commission's website, Commissioner. Those are our submissions, Commissioner. Thank you, Council. I'm aware of the pressing commitment, but at the same time, there are controversies that surrounds or trying to undermine the, the work of the Commission of Inquiry. And let me make it very clear here that we are Papua New Guineans and we have a responsibility
to our fellow countrymen. And once we have a task to execute in light of the loss of this country and our effort to get it through, I do not expect that there will be interference into the work of the Commission of Inquiry. But these are on records now. And in the history of any Commission of Inquiry, we have approached this kind of situation. But I am thankful that our work will now continue. It has come into light and the Prime Minister has seen the need that this work of Commission of Inquiry must continue to progress with, without any interference. And that must be also a warning to those who want to derail the work of the Commission of Inquiry. And they must be able to know that we are here, we, are, we mean business to deal with these issues. But as this is the in-house in matters that we are dealing with, the normal process of allowing this thing to take place will come. And any of these incidents or issues that have been, have been taken out, maybe individually, or for other reasons, sometimes it can be seen as a subjudice in law, and it can lead to it could be contemptuous to those people who are involved in these things. But we are dealing with things administratively, but let the flow of the in the course of doing this thing, the process will come through. And thank you, Council, for addressing all those issues. And to the public, I'd like to reassure all the public that the Commission of Inquiry is now alive and well. We will continue the work that is required now that all the formalities and the instruments are in order that I have just read out a short while ago. And we will come back to deal with some of those things when we resume back on the 26th of July, 2022. That gives the reason why the country is now going through at the moment because of the national general election. The polling will come in, in the next week or so. And then there's a period where a lot of people won't be around and that allows time to deal us allows time for the commission to deal with some of the in-house issues to get things in order. So when we return back on the 26th, all of these things will be now be in order for us to progress forward. So to all the, to the public and members of the commission of inquiry and those that have been following us throughout this inquiry, I am assuring the public at large that we are progressing very well and we are going through all the phases of our work and as has been read out a short while ago, we will, we will continue to do our work and achieve what is required of this Commission of Inquiry. And once again, I'd like to, in my closing remarks, is that uh, those that have been with this Commission of Inquiry and they are faithfully assisting us in getting the work done. Uh, I continue to praise you for your attendance and for your support through this time that we are going through. And as our council have indicated, there is no other issues that we will deal with this morning. And until we return back on the 26th of July, 2022, Associate, we can now adjourn to the date when we return back. Thank you.